and Jumanus. And now that I've been beamed up to make this talk about catatonia, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, and serotonin syndrome, we can begin. The pictures on the following slides are from the Star Trek Voyage Home Museum in Riverside, Iowa. Catatonia is a severe psychomotor syndrome that occurs in a variety of underlying medical and psychiatric disorders. Alcohol or benzodiazepine withdrawal can cause it. Neuromotor structure is intact, but functional control is impaired. There are two motor subtypes. The retarded type is marked by muteness and immobility, and it's the most common. The excited subtype is marked by prolonged purposeless agitation, which can lead to exhaustion and sometimes death. Catatonia can be a specifier or a separate syndrome. It's most commonly associated with mood disorders. It's a feature of many medical disorders, and delirium is thought to have a catatonic variant. Catatonia is a feature of and a risk factor for neuroleptic malignant syndrome. In one study, more than 60% of patients had a neurological cause for catatonia, 28% had a psychiatric cause, and 10% had a medication cause. Malignant catatonia versus NMS, are they the same? Are they different? NMS is caused by dopamine D2 receptor antagonism. What's common to both? Fever, autonomic instability, rigidity, and delirium. NMS can lack the fancy catatonic signs such as waxy flexibility, but so can malignant catatonia. Some experts think that NMS is simply a drug-induced form of malignant catatonia. Sequelae and complications run the gamut from trauma from the excited state to flexion contractures to cubitus ulcers, all the way up to death from blood clots. The differential diagnosis is long. Always look for an underlying illness. Delirium, catatonic variant is among them, non-convulsive status epilepticus, ebulia, which is often a neurologic problem, and psychogenic movement disorders. The injectable lorazepam challenge test is how you get started with this. It's a safe and effective way to unlock somebody from a mute and immobile state, and sometimes it looks like a miracle within five minutes of injection. There's a suggested algorithm for catatonia treatment on this slide. It starts with the IV lorazepam challenge test, and leads to oral dosing of lorazepam until you can get electroconvulsive therapy applied for definitive treatment, often in many cases. If ECT is logistically or legally impossible to get, then you can follow the steps below. The pathophysiology of catatonia is not well understood. Many conditions can present with catatonia, and there could be a final common pathway that involved decreased dopamine signaling in the basal ganglia orbital frontal and limbic systems, and it's noteworthy that brain injuries involved in these areas can result in a catatonic-like state, such as abulia. The telephone effect can overcome abulia by a not well understood mechanism, although that mechanism has been recently described as the theory of affordances, which gives patients increase cues for initiation that can't be produced volitionally. It involves simply telephoning the patient from outside the room when they won't talk to you face to face. That also can look like a miracle. Catatonia treatment is supportive, and that means preventing blood clots, treating dehydration and malnutrition, avoiding antipsychotics and using benzodiazepines for agitation, ECT, can be life-saving. Neuroleptic malignant syndrome is a form of drug-induced catatonia. It involves exposure to a neuroleptic. Four symptom clusters, as you see, are fever, rigidity, autonomic instability, and delirium. Risk factors are, as you see here, including increasing high doses of intramuscular uh, antipsychotics. Also, it can be caused by withdrawal of dopaminergic drugs. NMS treatment involves using benzodiazepines, as I've already mentioned. Dantrolene is reserved for severe NMS that is marked by extremely high temperatures, rigidity, and hypermetabolism. ECT, once again, is a very effective treatment. 
Serotonin syndrome is a condition caused by mainly overdoses on serotonergic drugs. It presents with an acute onset in minutes to hours. Patients are usually delirious. They may have diaphoresis, shivering, diarrhea, myoclonic jerks, and a shivering tremor. As I've said, serotonin syndrome is usually caused by overdoses on serotonergic drugs. The treatment is, of course, to first discontinue the offending agent, use benzodiazepines for muscle rigidity, anticonvulsants for seizures, and possibly ciproheptamine. This table distinguishes neuroleptic malignant syndrome from serotonin syndrome, and the items that are outlined or highlighted in red are uh, important to take note of. A common strategy for MS or SS would be to avoid serotonin agonists and dopamine antagonists if the diagnosis is, uh, is unclear. Providing supportive care is critical. Avoiding antipsychotics, using benzodiazepines, and avoid using bromocryptine, which is contraindicated in serotonin syndrome. These are the references.